there. I should just learn the, the hotkey for that. All right. Thank you, Robo Voice. And welcome everyone. Um, this today seem is really, really interesting to me because I think I've brought up this plugin a couple times in other workshops. And it's kind of just been like, I bring it up and it becomes a mystery <laughs> that I haven't tested myself. So I'm really thoroughly excited today because this create um, block theme plugin is supposed to help a lot of makers in WordPress create block themes without specifically needing, you know, code specific knowledge. So we're going to run through how that would look today. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to share this content with you all. I will preface this with, we will probably not go through and create all of a site's templates today. I only scheduled an hour, unfortunately, but we should at least be able to get the homepage done. So, and to get started, let's talk through a few points to help you get in the creativity zone. Uh, we'll talk through what this plugin actually is, and then we'll do a little sandbox session of trying to create that homepage with the plugin itself. So getting into the creative zone, I think, you know, some people, they just like get hit with the muse and they know what they're doing right away. Some people just rely on their exquisite design background knowledge. And, you know, others also rely on references. And I'm kind of one of those visual learners. So I do like to use um, or look, research a lot of references when I'm thinking about the design of things. So in, in this regard, I thought to give you some examples of a few themes. Um, our theme library is full of so many great themes that have uh, designers who put in the work to think through a lot of the composition and layout already. So um, I highly recommend folks to start with either visiting their favorite sites, depending on what type of site you're trying to make. In this case, if you're making a travel related site, you know, look up your favorite place where you want to travel and see what sites come up. Maybe they might give you some inspiration or you can check out the wordpress.org themes um, repository and search there for travel um, themes because there's a lot in there. This is, I just chose three to start, but there were basically hundreds in there for you to just browse through, get inspiration from, maybe even install and then create a theme off of it depending on your use case, um, but that's really up to you. Just something that will get you into the creative zone and note what you like best about those references. Once you have a good idea of what you like, I recommend you to get out your digital or manual pen and get to planning. I just did a, a light sketch here of like what I would like this homepage to look like. So at the top here, you can see there's maybe a tagline to the left. We can see also in the middle, a circular logo, links to the right. I like a big header at the top. So I, I put that space in there, maybe three posts in the middle with some featured images, a little section. And then below, since my site today is gonna be about travel blogging, um, I wanted to also have like this kind of puzzle piece space at the bottom where you can see different posts and like a quote unquote sidebar space on the far right. So this seems like a lot, but through this demo, I'm gonna share with you how to make all this magic happen with um, the site editor. And then we can also take this into a theme form. But as you're going through, don't think, oh my gosh, you know, I've had this amazing layout. What do I, I don't know how to actually put it together. There are amazing patterns in the wordpress.org pattern directory to also help you along. So if you're like, okay, this is the composition I like, I've sketched it all out, but I really don't know which blocks to use, how to get there, how to make it look the way I'm I envision it. Um, there's so many great people who have designed different patterns. You can also design a pattern as well and share it with the world. Um, but you could definitely grab what you need from this pattern library and plug it into the, the page that you're trying to create. That's totally fine as well. But once you've got all of that, <clears throat> we'll want to make sure that we have our create block theme plugin installed. So this plugin essentially allows you to create a new theme and export it all within the WordPress admin. And there's a lot of options here. You can create a new theme from a theme you have installed, like duplicate it, essentially. You can create a child theme from the theme you have installed. You can just start 
from um, a blank theme slate and make your theme from scratch. Um, that's what we're going to work on today. Or you can also um, just create a style variation. So if you were to have a 2023 installed, for example, you could create a new style variation for 2023 if that's the thing you just want to create. Or after you've created your new blank theme, you can use this plugin to also uh, create a style variation. So it's really taking out the need for you to do a lot of that coding background work yourself. And we're going to look in the back end of how this plugin is set up and those kind of options that it'll give you. So a couple other resources I wanted to share are like quick tips essentially is how when you're building a site, it's kind of hard to, in, at least for me, to envision how the site is going to look if there's no content. Um, because when you're building a theme, you're not putting content into it, right? You want to have placeholder <clears throat> areas where the content that's added to the site will propagate. So I would say if you're creating this new site for this theme, um, just try to have some dummy content ready, placeholder content ready, so that when you use a query loop, for example, and it's trying to pull your posts, it doesn't just come up blank. You have a few posts where you can see how your your art is coming to, to action here. So definitely have some placeholder content ready, have some images at the ready as well. Um, and then I like to set some post excerpts and featured images too, um, especially as I was saying, if we're going to be dynamically pulling up posts via the query loop, that just gives you a lot more to play around with visually if that content is already set. Here's some links to those. And as usual, the slides will definitely be shared with folks after the call as well. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you all my demo setup today or sandbox setup today. It's, <laughs> if you've been with me before, not very different from what I usually do here, but we're gonna be using local for the local environment, the Crate Block Theme Plugin 2023, and WordPress 6.1.1. I'm using all of the latest versions of everything I'm sharing with you today. Um, Cause I just wanna make sure, especially when you're putting a plugin on your site, there's things you wanna check, like whether or not that plugin is compatible with the latest version that you're using. So it's good to always kind of check between that version and your theme or your version of WordPress as well. Okay, so I do love giving options though. So if you're not into local WP or the themes that I've listed, thank oh, thank you, Laura, she pointed out that there's wordpress.org slash photos for free images as well. All the free things. And speaking of more free things, <laughs> here's some more themes. I've chosen solely block themes and local environment setups that you can test and play around with. I just find local to be pretty push start easy. So, um, but I understand that doesn't work for everyone. So choose what works best for you. Okay. So I put sandbox time here, but I will give a pause in case there are any questions before we dive in. And tactfully give myself a little water break. Okay, well, if that's not the case, please feel free to type. We'll be looking at the chat, me and my co-host, and we'll answer there, or feel free to raise your voice as we're going along here. But to start, this is a fresh install of WordPress here, just for this session. I'm gonna adjust my share screen a little bit. There we go, so you can see the whole admin bar as well. What I have done here is I've created a bunch of posts, as I was saying, right? So 
I've categorized a few of them. <clears throat> we're not going to get into that much today, but I wanted to have some content ready. So as we're going along and adding stuff here, I don't need to go and, you know, grab new images along the way or um, create posts. So we have a few posts at the ready here and we're going to work with these. But to get started, you'll see here, if I go to appearance themes, I just have baseline 2023 installed at the moment. This is what it would look like if I did not, absolutely nothing and just installed the theme, essentially. My travel theme is Japan, of course. But we're going to play with the Create Block theme plugin. So I'm going to go to plugins here, add new, do a little search. Where are you at? There it is. It's by WordPress.org. So the brilliant folks in the community who are bringing you WordPress. Yes, yes. Let's see what this plugin looks like. So it's this nice little blue block with a C, very simplistic pixel-like. We're going to activate it here. And so what changes is when you go now, once it's activated, <clears throat> is that you'll see this create block theme and manage theme font section. So let's check this out real quick. When you get into the create block theme, and I'm gonna just make this a little bigger, at least for me, <laughs> it's a little small and I'll, I'll put it back after. I just wanna be able to capture this better on the screen. Um, we have a few options as soon as you get to this plugin page. You can export 2023. Um, which we didn't really want to do. It's just going to export it as it is. Oh, it's great when it's bigger. Awesome. Uh, we can create a child of 2023. So it'll just create a child of it so that you can create new variations. We can clone 2023. This will have all of the assets of the activated theme as well as the user changes. But this will essentially like clone it, but 2023 won't be the parent theme, if that makes sense. We can overwrite 2023. Actually, as I'm going through, I'm so sorry. Let me click on each one. So when I click on it, we get different options as well. Theme name, short description. You can add it to your public page where people can find more information. These settings typically don't change, except when you're exporting, you're not going to get that setting. Creating. Cloning, it's a similar thing. You want to name your new cloned theme. And that's the only thing required of this. So if you just want to get in and get started, you don't have to fill in all this information. You can edit that later. You can just start with the theme name. Also overwrite, you see that option disappears because you're overwriting what's already there. So there's not much that's going to be editable in terms of the theme information. Create a blank theme. This is a new theme creation, so you're going to name your theme at the minimum. And then create style variation. And you say you see here it says save user changes as a style variation of 2023. It's essentially using what's currently installed when it's telling this directive here. So right now, if I was just like, hey, I would like to make a style variation of 2023 named uh, gold, it would create that name, and then I should be able to edit and save that. So question, if you clone the theme, will there be changes if the theme updates? So that, I believe, is the difference between, you know, creating a child theme or overriding. Um, in my mind, I believe, like, it has the assets, but it's not the same theme, if that makes sense. So, like, it, it's like... Yeah, you clone it and then you can make all the changes, but it's not going to like update whenever 2023 updates is how I believe this functionality works. So oh, it won't update because you'll probably name it something else. Yes, right, exactly. So I think that's where like the 
gaming portion is critical too, like, cause that's a way and where the public URL where users can find more information about it's like creating a new theme. Um, so, you know, when you create a child theme as well, its parent theme will be 2023. And then you can have variations within your child theme so that when the parent theme updates, your, your child theme edits don't change. So I do want to note a couple of things here too. And let me share a resource for, for child themes. So like if you, if you decide you want to make a child theme, for example, um, if you're making extensive customizations, you know, beyond styles and a few theme files, creating a parent theme like cloning um, might be a better option than a child theme um, because creating a parent theme allows you to avoid issues with deprecated code as well in the future. Um, and this needs to be decided on like a case by case basis. And when you create a child theme, it inherits the look and feel of the parent theme and all of its functions, but can be used to make modifications to any part of the theme. So um, those are some critical points to, to note if you're trying to think about, do I clone versus do I want a child theme? Um, how many edits are you hoping to make? Do, is the parent theme actually perfect, but this one little thing, or do you want to change a lot about the parent theme? And if you want to change a lot about it, it might be best to clone it or create a theme from scratch. And we have another question. Can you make a child theme of a Genesis theme? We're asking for clarification. Are we referring to a theme made with the Genesis framework or is there a theme called Genesis? So it would need to be a theme that is installed on your site. So if this is a theme installed on your site, you could clone it. But Ben is, is answering or, or sharing some more information about um, WordPress Genesis and child themes. Maybe that will be helpful for you. Okay, but please keep the questions going. This is this is really great already. Um, for today's demo, though, I'm going to start. I'm going to create a blank theme, which oh, sounds a little scary, but it's actually not too bad. I promise you. So we'll name this theme my my travel theme. I'm you know I'm very descriptive here, <laughs> and we're going to click generate. Bam! That was what like two seconds. Blank theme created. Head over to appearance and themes. Okay, let's head over to appearance and themes. And I'm gonna just one downsize here. We can see here, my travel theme, it's, it's already ready. And because I didn't input any information about this, there's nothing here, right? You see, there's no um, image, there's no description, it's by anonymous. It sounds a little foreboding, but it's not. Um, if I had decided to put all that information in, it would have propagated in in this. So the, at the bare minimum, you can get away with, you know, just having this theme um, with a name, and then you can edit these theme informational details afterward. So I'm going to go ahead and activate this theme. And if we refresh my page, it's pretty bleh. <laughs> it's not giving anything fun right now. Um, and that's because it doesn't have any, any template pages. So I do want to double back here for the vocal record here. We have some folks chiming in around Genesis and Linda saying that Genesis is the building block similar to WordPress, but there are themes that go with Genesis that are already child themes of Genesis. It's a separate framework. Yes, the create block theme plugin works with any block theme. That's correct. So Genesis Elementor DV at all will be different. Yes, and Nomad is no oh no Nomad is noting that there'll be less and less need for these frameworks with what we're learning today. Yay! 
right. Yeah, I hope so. Okay, with this activated, we're gonna do one thing first. So let's look at this manage theme fonts. Right here, you see that all I have is the system font, which means that that's the only font I'm gonna be able to play around with in this new theme of mine. Um, but we want variety here. So let's let's add a couple of fonts. And I do wanna share that these are pulled from Google fonts. And it's pretty easy to select a new font. I just clicked on add font and maybe it's a little too easy because you get this long list of fonts that you could use for your site, which is, which is great too, because variety is amazing. Um, but if you don't know what these fonts look like, don't worry, there's a little preview you get as well. And you can check which variants you want. So you don't have to have every single type of this font with your new theme. Um, you can just select a couple versions. I'm going to, I know this one, so I'm going to put that in there. Let's see. That's a little too much for me, but you can have fun with this too. Like, um, this is probably not the fastest way to review a lot of fonts. I, I just linked you the fonts.google.com where you can more quickly <laughs> see which fonts are at your disposal here. But, um, that would probably be the best way on it, in my opinion, to see which fonts you can add at a glance. Otherwise you're gonna be like clicking, looking, clicking, looking. Um, so definitely utilize this resource to get a quick look at what could be the fit for you. Okay, I just chose a couple of fonts. We don't wanna to spend too much time there, but as you can see, you already have so much at your disposal here in terms of font variations, which is pretty awesome. And something that was pretty difficult before you had to have, um, at least in my, experience where I don't have that much technical knowledge, I had to like add another plugin to do this. All right. So we chose a couple of fonts. So here we go. We have a couple questions. So I've gone through Google fonts and made a list of my favorites on a post-it note. Yes, Laura, that is, that is really good. Actually, I should add that to the quick tips, like get your fonts ready too. <laughs> Because you don't want to spend hours just reviewing fonts when you just want to build a theme. Um, and if you add too many Google fonts, doesn't it slow down your site? How many is too many from Karen? That is a good question. Um, I'm not sure if it would slow down your site too much, but I'm always in the team of use only what you need. Um, if you install 50 plugins, for example, you're probably going to bog down performance. If you install 50, fonts. Are you going to use all of those fonts? We have to be a little realistic there too. And if someone has a more direct answer, um, please do chime in. But in the meantime, I'm going to go to the editor. And right now you see at the top here, index is the page that we're playing with right now. When you have no other templates on your site, index is the only um, template that you're going to have. And it's basically just going to pull up all of your posts. But of course, this isn't really giving us some front page energy. So I'm going to click here on the left and then go to templates. And then you can see, oh, yeah, I just have index, but we can add more. And today we want to add a front page template. So shock, it doesn't look much different from the index, but that's OK. This is where you now, as the theme creator, can start playing around with your, your new theme. So if we kind of double back to my sketch here, so we can just review some of the aspects I wanted. So probably my header needs to be changed. We need this header image here, and maybe like a cover block, and then three featured articles. So let's work on that first half. We've got some action going on in the chat, but looks okay. There's an article on Google Fonts clogging up your site. Um, so we can try to, try to grab the link to that too for folks to reference later. Okay, so opening up the list view is going to be the best way, in my opinion, to just figure out what's going on here. So just looking at the header alone, you can see this isn't quite the flow that I want. In the header and footer, I want to make sure folks know are two template parts as well. So that's why they have this little fancy icon. And I don't have to edit it here. So I'm going to go 
click my header and click edit, it's going to take me to the header template part. So I'll, I'll just play around with this here a bit. This just gives me like a dedicated space to update the header. So I've already got a couple things in my navigation, but this logo should be in the middle. I probably don't need two rows. So let's see here. I don't have to completely change too much of what's going on, but I'm going to pull my logo out into this row on the top. Yeah, maybe I want the site tagline. I'm going to pull that above here or site title. Let's leave the site title. Yeah. Um, don't want the site tagline. I'm going to remove it. I do want the navigation. Let's push this here. And then I'm going to remove this other row. So everything is now on one row. And you see here, there's this huge space at the bottom. I don't want that either. I'm going to remove the spacer. I kind of want it to be flush. Oh, no worries, Linda. I chose the create a uh, blank theme. So we're, we're completely going from scratch here. And I've just created now a um, homepage template and we're playing with the header of that. So to get a bit more into it here, let me see. Just stretch this out a little bit more. So these panels are a little big. Okay. Yeah. So here we can see what's going on with my groups. There's a lot of spacing that I could apply here to the group as a whole. Um, for one, I don't like that this row is so flush to the side. So I've selected the row and I think the bottom and the top is fine, but left you see now on the left this this is flush but if i bump it up to two it's now a little more centered and i can do the same on the right side as well so let's do that and i want to i'm going to work with the same kind of universal setting here so let's update this to maybe four on the top and four on the bottom and that is pretty much thick enough for me. Um, another thing I wanted to change is uh, this site logo from square to rounded. So I'm just gonna round that off there. And here with my site title, I don't want it to be a link. And I don't want it to say create block theme, so. Let's say Japan travel or something to denote what type of site it is. And you can see here, let's look at the typography for a second, because we want to see if my font families that I chose are even here. So default is set. But yes, the cabin and Roboto that I chose for my theme are here. So let's put it in Roboto. And honestly, that looks fine to me. The only other thing, let's, let's leave this like this for now. So we're done playing with the header. There's a couple changes now that I've made, right? I've changed the title. So it's gonna ask me if I wanna change that throughout the whole site, which I do. And now because I edited this template part, um, it's asking me to update it. So I do wanna update that. And from there, we can go back to our site template and our front page. So now the header that I've just edited is ready for action here, looking, looking all right, looking better than before. But what I had next was a kind of cover area. So I'm going to just click these three vertical dots and then do insert after and do a cover block. I did a backslash and typed in cover. That backslash allows you to search through the block library. And I already have some images loaded up in my media library. So I'll just choose one of these nice little images here. Let's do these beautiful mountains. And I, I don't know, I'm not going to write anything here. I have the title up there. If you wanted to, you could, I don't know, live your best life. 
list, <laughs> your best list. <laughs> Actually, that kind of works too. But live, oh my gosh, live your best life if you want to write something there. You don't have to. Um, I just want to give you all a view of what that could look like. And let's change the font here to a Roboto. Um, so with the cover image as well, you have things like opacity settings of this overlay. You can make it as dark or as light as you'd like and write text over it. I hear um, that text on an overlay is not always the best. So I'm going to just remove that for now, especially because my, <laughs> my tagline was a little silly. And now what we have is this kind of this flush header. Ooh, it's not flush. I want it to be flush. So we can work on that too. Sometimes as you're going through, you'll discover there's just some dimensions that are not making it as flush as you want it to. So I did get this flush before and you can just play around and find, find the setting because there is something here and it might be in the row, not the bottom, not the margin. Sometimes it's grouping. I'm gonna try and grouping real quick. It's not the grouping. Well, we'll figure this out. Our next step here is creating this three featured posts here. So what I'm gonna do is under my cover, I'm gonna do an insert after. And so I'll show you another way to add blocks here. I'll just click this add. Oh, add pattern. I thought this was gonna tell me to add a block. That's not what I wanna do, but that's very interesting. Well, I'm gonna click here and do my backslash um, because I want a query loop. I know I have one below, but I wanna show the, the fresh start of a query loop here. So we're gonna choose, you can start blank, which isn't actually blank. It'll ask you if you want to do things like the title or excerpt at minimum. But here, when you click on choose, you have some patterns already available to you. And this is another reason why having content already in there is just, better for these kinds of choices um, because otherwise you <clears throat> won't be able to get this visual representation of, of what you want it to look like. So I am going to do this one where it has things in a row, a column of three, but I only want three posts to show up here and I don't, there's a couple of changes I want to make. So right now it's inheriting the query from the template. I'm going to turn that off. So now I can manipulate this query loop a bit more. There's this display settings. And right now it's items per page six. I'm gonna move that to three. So now I only have that three section. And then going a little deeper into my query loop, we can see the composition of it. So we've got the post title. I wanted a uh, featured image actually. And um, as I was playing around with this, I discovered something really fun, which was I put a cover here and I chose use featured image as the cover. So now the featured image of the post that I am choosing is there dynamically, which I hadn't done before. If you have done it before, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not showing something new, but I thought that was really cool because now I'm going to grab these three and then put it under the cover. Okay. And hold, hold it right a moment. Okay. Don't worry. I'm going to fix this, but I'm going to remove this paragraph. Sometimes I do want to point this out. I get confused sometimes when I click on this and I'm like, Oh, where's the remove? Just scroll, take a breath and just scroll down a little. It's there. It's uh, getting into quite long of a menu now, but I can remove it that way. Okay. So now we have all this great stuff, but we can't see anything. I'm going to do another insert before and do a little like cover inception here, cover inception, and then drag this stuff into that cover. So we got a double cover here, but in the back is my, um, my featured image to which you're like, but Destiny, you can't even see it now. What are you up to? This is where you could get, you could have like that fun overlay play around, fade thing. Just make sure your other colors are strong. 
so that you don't make it difficult for folks to to click through. So that's I just wanted to point that out as an option to folks because I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, you can also then go in and add a background to like group this, for example, and then add a background color so that it's not as strong, you know, and it looks wild in that sizing. But I just wanted to show, yeah, like give you all some ideas of how this could actually look. So let's save here. And this was the front page before it wasn't giving much creativity, but now we've added a couple things. And already I think it's looking like, like a site. Um, of course, this could still use some love, <laughs> you know, changing this overlay, like the white on, on the overlay color doesn't look so great. So these are just some ideas as Noah was noting that you can play around with um, to make it look like a unique site. And so, you know, whenever these posts get updated, new posts get added, it's going to automatically pull in, you know, the featured image in the back. It'll automatically have this design, which is pretty, pretty um, interesting to me. I'm going to remove that white background. It's a little, a little distracting for me. Um, and yeah, you can do all your other design things like centering the title, um, add a read more button as it tells you to. You can move things around here just to make it your own. And I'll do an insert after and read more. Something I like to do with the read more button is just give it some, well, it's just read more link, but you can make it look like a button. I should clarify that. Um, let's give it some there so people can click into these posts. So already it's looking like hopefully a theme that someone would try to install on their site for travel. You know, more design is always something you can do. Okay, I'm going to stop there. We've already got halfway through here. And let me see here. We've got another question. A little advanced, but can you set the query loop to allow posts from different categories? For example, if you have three categories like b, &B marinas, and hotels. Could you set the first block to bring in BNBs, the middle block to bring in marinas, and the block to the right? <clears throat> yes, Linda, but not in this way. You would use columns for that or rows. Maybe rows would be best. So you would create three rows with three different query loops and then set those categories in those query loops. So then I hope it's making sense already, but you know, it's, it's each contained query loop. Yeah. But if you wanted to, since this is one single query loop, if you're like, I want only those two categories or three categories to be shown here, that's where going down in the query loop and using the filter taxonomies will be really helpful here. If you just wanted in this section alone, the three top categories to show, for example. Um, but if you want each row to show a different one, each time that is updated, yeah, um, try a row or a column. I think row would be best. Okay, so we've done a little design fun right there. I, you could do design forever and we only got 18 minutes left. So I'm gonna do an insert after here as well. Um, I will put a little asterisk here and say, try to click the whole block be before doing an insert after. You don't want to get caught doing an insert after while you're still inside the kind of group that you created. Um, and here I'm going to do another cover with just a color here because I just want to have a section. So um, hottest new travel spots. I know I'm, I'm really bad at thinking of taglines, but here with a cover, you can manipulate how big this is. You can also make sure that it is, you know, edge to edge, toggle full height um, with your with your content. If you want to be um, doing something similar to what we did above, you can do your cover reception again and add another cover color and then have your text in there instead. And then you have this kind of cover and a cover thing where you can manipulate that a bit further as well. 
maybe adjust the overlay a little bit. And that gives you just a little bit more design difference there. Okay, so that's our section, our cover cover section. And I'm gonna do an insert after there because going back to our thing, we've almost nailed it all, but now we have this section here where we want posts and this section here where we want like a kind of sidebar thing. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna use, oh, this is a hard choice. So, <laughs> sorry, I'm having an internal battle. When I did this demo by myself, I did do column. I think there's like some false sense of security when it comes to columns, because especially they give you this visual reference of what it's going to look like. So I'm going to stick with what I did before just to show you how I've done it. Um, but essentially this left column is going to have my query loop with my posts. And then my right column is going to have my sidebar, whatever that's going to be. Um, so in this column, let's start adding uh, a query loop. And as you can see here, what I wanted was like one big one here and then like two posts on the side. And this is kind of getting into what you were talking about just now, Linda. Um, what I did here was actually before this, I'm gonna insert before, I did a row within the column. Bam. And that's where I put my query loop. So I'm gonna drag and drop this query loop. It's gonna be really fast, but drag and drop it into there. And then I can choose the kind of big style that I wanted here, which was something like this should be fine. Yeah. Actually, I like how this looks. Let's do one of these. <clears throat> and then once again, <clears throat> pardon me, since we don't want a bunch of posts here, we want to have more um, modify, make it more modifiable. So I'm going to remove the setting to inherit query from template and mess with the items per page. So I want one item per page. There we go. Sometimes, okay, I do want to note this too. Sometimes as you're going around playing with the query loop, it doesn't update automatically. Don't get scared that your changes aren't making, um, aren't being made here. Just try to click around to another area on the site so that it can update or just save and publish and you'll be fine. Um, I encountered that a couple of times, but I just want to note, like, don't freak out. It's, it's still capturing what you're trying to do. So this query loop, I have only one showing. And what I did here as well, because the, that same Ikutsushima tour is at the top. These are the top three ones. I want this post to start from four. So I get an entirely new post down here in this section. So it's only going to show one and it's going to show from four. So this means the fourth post. It's not, it's going to skip the first three and show the fourth post. So that's what I've done in this column. Row. And this definitely gets tricky very quickly. So let's have a look here. Mountainscapes. Huh, or did I just psych myself out? Let me let me tell myself, let me do what I said I should do. Do a little refresh here. No, it's still pulling. So I think there's two columns in here, but that is okay. The template, the query loop template you used added an extra column. Added an extra column. Okay, mm. brilliant. So then we'll just pull this up. Will you not let me? Haha. <laughs> okay. And then we'll <laughs> actually. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. Okay, cool. And let's, let's remove this here. There we go. Oh, crisis averted. What are you? You're another group. Go away. Okay. As someone said before, this is the <laughs> reality of creating a theme. Okay. So we have this one row with this one, uh, item with that design that I wanted, but we also want on the other side of it to have another query loop. So I'm going to 
do an insert after here. And we'll do another query loop. And for this one, we can keep it simple as well and choose maybe this one here. It'll give me two things on the side. Um, and going into the settings once more, we're going to do the same formula we did with the other one. So now this one should be offset by five. So that it's not showing us again this Japanese mountainscapes post. And then I only want two shown here. Right now it's looking a little wild. Don't worry. It's not obeying my. Hey, Destiny, you just put yes. the numbers opposite of what you wanted. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. Two. I was like, whoa, this is getting wild. And five. Thank you. All right. Perfect. So we have those two new items showing right there. And let's save so we can see what this looks like on the front page. And refresh. OK, this is all right, but definitely the left side is not the sizing I wanted. And that could be definitely due to the query loop that I chose for this. So I would say don't be discouraged by that. Um, you can just manipulate the query loop with another pattern or adjust it yourself to something different. Um, so I won't, for the in the essence of time, I won't keep playing around with that because there's some other aspects we wanted to, to work on today. But I did want to show how you can have two different types of post styles here, and then um, we can work with some kind of sidebar, which... I don't know, for some sites, it might be like a subscription kind of thing. So maybe you want to add here, and I should have found like a kind of subscribe template. Well, this is where patterns might come in handy. So I've just pulled up this patterns directory here so that we can see if there's anything we can just quickly steal for the sidebar because I honestly just wanted some kind of like hey subscribe to our newsletter type thing and with this I'm going to copy here I'm going to go in here this one looks just fine uh, copy pattern jump back to here and Hopefully while I'm there, I can just paste in there. Let's see. Maybe I need a paragraph first. And paste. So now we have on the, yeah, perfect. Work smarter, not harder, a pattern that we just chose. And I just pasted it right there. There's a subscribe block now. Maybe I don't have that. Maybe I need Gutenberg <laughs> installed on this site. Uh, but let's save that and do a refresh. So now I have this kind of sidebar space. And I know some of you are thinking, Destiny, this does not look design beautiful. And you know, that's, that's fine. That's why you can keep playing around with it, right? We just wanna have like the basic principles of the layout that we want, right? And then we can keep working on the design afterward. Um, and my last thing here that I had was, oops, sorry about that. Some more posts at the bottom here. So after all of this column work is said and done, I would simply just add a, um, let's go under this column. Yeah, here we are. Ooh. We're just gonna add another uh, query loop. Not from the pattern though. Oh, here we go. Let's do an insert after, and we'll add one last query loop very quickly. This one that I added was three posts. So we're going to do another template, three posts, one. You can also duplicate a pattern that you've already created. So I think there's a su subscribe. I, yeah, that's a good point, um, Ben that you know, the subscribe boxes are usually introduced by plugins or your host. So as you're creating a theme, 
you can, this is placeholder, right? Like this is telling your potential activator of your theme, hey, this is where you could put a subscribe to your newsletter section. So they can replace this with their um, subscription service of choice. Um, but after here, I'm just going to add to this one last query loop. Uh, we're getting down to the, the wire here, but a featured image, just so we can see some things here and do that one last manipulation of the query loop block. So it doesn't inherit. We can make sure that we're doing the right thing here. Items for page three. And then now we want to offset from, I think it should be seven now. I'm going to do six just so we can see one more. I should have created one more post. But now we have those three posts at the bottom that maybe loads more if people keep scrolling. And we'll go back to the front and refresh. So there were so many other little design things I wanted to do, but you know, design takes time. And first, just getting the layout you want is critical. So I think I've done as much as I can here and it's all saved. So I just wanna show you all one last thing. Going back to the dashboard, we can go to create block theme. And now, you know, you know, once you've done your finishing design touches and made it as beautiful as you'd like, we can export the My Travel theme. And I'm going to quickly open up one other test site that I have, the, my throwback to my plant mom journey here. And we're going to go to appearance and just add this theme we created. and install now. Theme installed successfully. Yes, that's the first step. And let's activate it. Oh, actually, hold on. Let me go, we're gonna activate this. Let's see, let's do the before and after. So if we visit the site now, this is my plant mom journey. It's all right. This was built with patterns. I've duplicated this Monstera post a couple of times for this purpose. And let's activate now the new travel theme that we've just created with this create block theme and refresh. So now it's following, I mean, it's not that pretty right now, but the design aspects that we put in to the travel theme we just created. So these three spotlighted posts with the featured image behind, we have our double cover, we have that layout that looks somehow better on here. I guess it's the pictures <laughs> and then that sidebar and then the three posts. So it's following the, the principles, the principal layout that we set for the theme that we just created. Last step, make it pretty <laughs> or prettier. And that's all I had for you today, folks. I know that was a lot. <laughs> I hope there was um, enough time for you to digest a, a bit of it. But within, you know, 40 minutes, we created, you know, the framework of a theme. And from there, you can, of course, work on creating your other template pages for your theme once the home page is down. And yeah. Yes, that's correct. So you can take the your newly created theme and sell it or share it. It's a 100% new block theme created by you. You'll just want to edit all the, the details. So the new theme would need to be updated by, by you. So there's a couple things you could do. Um, you could put the code on GitHub and update it there. Um, you, if you have, <laughs> I'm not really like too sure about this, but like if you're like a theme dispensary, like you can push the updates, right? From where it's hosted. Um, but in general, this right now, my version 0 0.1 would just exist as it is until I decide to update it and create a version two, for example. I think maybe versioning would be a, would need to be a, a, a separate session. Yeah, I'm glad you think it's awesome, Linda. Yay. I think it's awesome too. Um, I, the first time I did this theme, it, it looked a little better, not going to lie, but I think that's because I had way more time to play with it. 
Um, but that's okay. It's it's not about making it look pretty. It's about making sure we all understand like what's what's possible. Um, so as you go along here, I do want to share with you a, a couple of resources. You know, as you're playing with this, there is the support thread for this. So if you have any questions, anything goes wrong, please definitely share that with the community. Um, and then to get some inspiration on blocks, you can also look at the um, the pattern. Linda asks, if you want to update, you could create your new theme as a child theme. You totally could. If you just want to make a few edits. Yeah, why not? And we're about time. Wow, that went by so quickly. I'm going to stop my share. Thank you so much, everyone. I had so much fun. <laughs> Thank you for, as always, the brilliant questions you have. Um, you really always get my mind loading up and, <laughs> and thinking about things differently.